would continue to go higher further. How about consumer discretionary? Consumer discretionary had a sigh of relief. Macy's and Nordstrom are department stores, a function of consumer discretionary. We've seen a lot of retailers last night. There was a couple of short covering owing to that earnings report. So consumer discretionary retailers, some, some, some of them went up 5%, some of them went up 20%. So on the average, the index is up. 3x leverage is 15% up. The semiconductor bulls, you could notice as well when NVIDIA, which didn't actually uh, hit uh, all the expectations and was actually down about 6% pre-markets, was getting bought up last night. You're seeing that the market is willing to buy no matter the earnings report. So whether it was short covering or not, last night it, you could already see that the market was willing to buy after the federal meeting. FOMC, the market already knew that there will be a 50 basis points hike on June and July. And the Fed was aggressive enough that made people feel that, all right, with good earnings in China, good earnings in a few retailers, plus the usual from the Fed, we are oversold anyway. The markets took it as a risk sentiment on. And with semiconductors like NVIDIA, failing earnings report but getting bought out, you saw market actually bid up the ones that have good earnings like AMD. So that represented that 11% rise on your semiconductors. With your semiconductors, discretionary and Chinese internet bulls already running pre-markets, um, you've already got many buyers already covering as well the SPACs. A couple of SPACs were being covered as well as the meme stocks. Take note that last night, prior to last night further, meme stocks were already getting squeezed, even with the smallest news, such as just an increase in the borrowing rate of GME. This made GME go from 90 to 130, 150 in just three days. So those are um, a function, in my view, of low liquidity markets. That is really why um, there was, in an indecision market, any type of news can trigger it to go up 20% or could go down 20%. We got, however, good news. That's why these are the results. Of course, um, that result resulted to a lot of inverse hedge funds dropping quickly. You've got semiconductor shorts, obviously, an inverse of semiconductor longs down 11%. You've got the FANGs, the levered funds, going down 10%. You've got the SQQQ, another triple levered fund, down 8%. Um, you've got the FAS, which are the bank-related names, also rising last night, which made the FAS, which is a bear fund, down 7%. The ARC ETF, the total short innovation, it was down 4%. So a lot of people were still bearish on growth names, but they were adamant in buying semiconductors and a lot of NASDAQ names. How about the volatility index? The volatility index remained high despite the super strength of a few names, such that even UVXY still stayed at $15 or just down 1%. If you do want to really hedge your portfolio and protect yourself over the next few days, the argument is that even if these inverse funds go down 10 or 20%, a couple of you might want to enter a few of them. My first look here is to buy it 10% lower, like FAS at $20, even if it can go $16. Remember, this is the first gain in eight weeks. Just like the first love, people would remember it enough. Uh, and so whether it lasts uh, a few days or a few weeks, the, the proper thing to, um, to observe is to see how each sector acts. So we are already seeing that the fans and the semiconductors are willing to go up. And so we, we begin to look at these indices, as well as how the consumer defensives are performing. Our long-term view is that in the next six months, the market will still fall. That there is a short covering, there is some buying of high-quality assets, but in the next six to 12 months, since we are still in a recession, you are getting this gain uh, in the market as a chance to load up on put options. That means you could have a, a chance to potentially buy all of these inver inverse funds, in fact, at a 20 to 30% or even a 40% discount. So as the markets could rally after eight weeks of getting clobbered down, let's say we gain another week, so one week, two weeks, or three weeks, you have um, a potential 
to make a very cheap entry now for your shorts. So do watch. Um, these are the potential names that you should be buying on pullbacks or buying on dips. Okay, so um, the volatility index, the UVXY, perhaps SQQQ at about 45. Um, we watch first how low the, the, the SQQQ would go, which means that your TQQQs would go as high as 32 or 34 or 35. So we watch things rather than predict. Now, um, also, we are looking to actually short a lot of your consumer staples. As I said, consumer defensives, Hershey's and Diageo, we are looking to short as it rallies. So you'll notice that so far, while the market's going haywire, it has always happened that Hershey's and Diageo, even the Coca-Cola's and the Pepsi's, although they can rise on a market that's rallying or less fall when the market is falling, the argument we have is that the sales due to inflation will eventually hit their margins and it will hit their income as a result. So next three months and next six months, they're still not off the hook. Now, um, how about the airlines? How about the consumer discretionary in the reopening space? A lot of the airlines, a lot of these travel-related platforms haven't had a hit in their guidance nor their earnings. A lot of airlines are actually forecasting very good numbers for the next three, three months, i.e. the next quarter and even this year. That was a result of the reopening of the economy. Now, although the market is very happy on these names, we warn people that during this first gain in eight weeks of the market, while these stocks could potentially go higher, these are the charts that we want to short as high as they go. So from um, an, uh, a perspective of a retail, what you have to wait is to wait for the first week or the first day of rejection. Remember that this is the first week of gains and these could go higher and higher for the next two days, five days, or let alone three weeks. We watch, but these are really um, a matter of, it's not predicting, it's a matter of observing, observing and reacting. Since tonight is likely to be still a strong night, shorting them now is like 50-50. You could be right or you could be wrong. It could still rise next week. The perfect chance to short, in my view, is when you see everything aligned, everything getting rejected, and everything going down. So while you can see weakness already in crypto, that is only just the first sign that when the market tank, crypto would fall double or triple. That's all you know. If the markets go up tonight and you try to short MicroStrategy at 220, it doesn't mean you're right. MicroStrategy can hit $250. But you have to understand that you are shorting the weakest sectors. And this, in our view, is also a weak sector to watch. Airlines, travel-related names, look at it day by day and let's see where it goes has, uh, as we don't believe them to actually hit all-time highs. Um, China is an interesting um, company, Chinese issue like this trip.com. We prefer shorting this if you want $24. I'm still waiting 10 to 20% higher for a better entry to short. Now, of course, with Chinese earnings doing well, you could argue that these stocks would, of course, rally. So last night, a lot of Chinese companies did rally after being oversold for so long. And to give you perspective, how oversold is China? We're talking about 10-year multiple lows, some 13 years. So we're not talking about just a recession that is worse than 2020 COVID pandemic. The drops in China price in even the global financial crisis. So from a long perspective, whether it be short covering or really just high quality asset picking, it is not observed, uh, it's not absurd if some value investors like Ray Dalio or Charlie Munger would take a contrarian view in names like Alibaba. The rally of Alibaba 15% last night is often just as a penny stock mover. It isn't normal, if you will ask me, but it has become normal for Alibaba to behave like a penny stock because number one, it is illiquid. A lot of U.S. Has, um, US investors have dumped Alibaba as if it's just a penny stock. A lot of stocks have shunned China and called them uninvestable, despite upgrades from Goldman Sachs, upgrades from JP Morgan, and despite the fact that China themselves 
are willing to do a monetary easing or a stimulus. So what you are seeing here is that the investors have become so bearish to the point that they ignore all the good signs fundamentally and technically, which, we, which gives us actually an opportunity, even from a short-term perspective. If you're going to ask me, meme stocks are rising, U.S. names like FANGs are rising, semiconductor stocks are rising, a few names are rising, even if the retail segment is a mixed, pi mixed picture. Because, of course, you've got Dollar Tree doing well. Macy's has done well, but your Walmart and your Target isn't doing well. So you've got a mixed report on retail. But how about Chinese names? In Chinese names, you have the option today to buy a company that you already know has been shunned away treated with 10 to 12-year, 13, 15-year lows or all-time lows, and yet the earnings aren't that bad. So from just even a speculator perspective, the value still remains in China. But you just have to think that it could not rally forever. It will just rally five days or six days and then drop down yet again. Nonetheless, from an investing perspective and trading perspective, you have to agree that Alibaba on drops at $80.75 have really seen the bottom and double tested that bottom. And any rally stores 100, 110, 120 is where you will get resistance. And that is still 10 to 20% higher than the current, which begs the question that if next week we get a drop in the market because of whatsoever reason, due to the lack of liquidity, my answer is that there will be very few sellers as well in Chinese names. Very few sellers simply because the float is small, there is a real buyback program on Alibaba, and there's enough pessimism in essence to make a short squeeze effect. So I'm not surprised Alibaba and Baidu did these 14% and drops next week would continue to be bought drops today would continue to be bought. And that's why Hong Kong rallied 3% after getting those good earnings. Usually when you get good earnings, people would not buy because they think it's already up 10%. But the markets didn't do that. In this type of good news, the markets bought because they realized they've priced in so much negativity in China that they're actually willing to buy up even Unfortunately, even the bad companies. So you can see that despite the bad earnings of XPeng, it rallied 7%. So what I'm saying here is that in China, identify which companies had good earnings and which had bad earnings. Because as XPeng rallies maybe at $25, that should be shorted. If Li Auto rallies higher than 20%, Neo higher at 10 to 20%, those are shorts. How about if Alibaba rallies again and again and again? You might not want to short it. If you will short it, short it at 110 or 120 if the chance allows you. I.e., even in Chinese space, you are seeing actually, I think there is going to be high quality versus low quality earnings. So you have to be more vigilant and more selective rather than a blanket sell on overall Chinese issues. Shanghai economy is, of course, positive. Why would you potentially go for a second week of gain next week? Because Chinese, Shanghai is reopening by June. Shanghai economy is improving as end of lockdown nears. And the part that government is trying to do is really help save what is, uh, is in their mandate, which is save their economy, i.e. don't let China contract. So there's a possibility that China will ease the tech crackdown. So there's really a lot of good news in terms of Alibaba in the short term, as well as for Baidu. Although I would argue I'll just choose Alibaba. Now, in terms of this rally, you have the option to buy any stock. But of course, you are preferably going to buy the stocks that you believe have high dividends, attractive valuation, and earnings growth momentum. 
And we believe that it is energy names. And we don't believe that other companies or other sectors are as resilient. While they aren't rising 10, 20% in a day, the argument is that if you'll notice, on a day like last night, they still went up. And on a week, on week or a year-to-date perspective, these stocks have been rallying 100% or 50% for the year. And we expect most of these energy names to be continuously resilient. So um, recently, we've said that commodities like uranium, because of alternative energy, needing that commodity is a buy. We're seeing that play out. Of course, day-to-day, it's going to be volatile, but we are seeing that energy names like URG, this is a small cap, a very micro cap in uranium, going up. UAC also going up. But that doesn't mean that Kameko J, which is the largest, isn't rising. Kameko J was also rising 2%. Now, how about the shippers? Most of them, like Diana Shipping, SBLK, did well and still rallied 2%. Now, these stocks might not impress you when you see the daily. And so let's take a look at the year-to-date and the, the monthly so that you could see why it makes sense that your money on this rally should focus on the performance of the strongest ones. Okay, um, this year we would argue, is very difficult to make money on the long side. Year-to-date gains of these names. Board drilling goes up 150%. Helmerick Payne up 117%. Golden Ocean, which is shipping, it is just delivering a lot of these oil and ships in their tankers, up 70%. Earthstone, 63%. Hess, 63%. Diana Shipping, 60%. Exxon Mobil, 58%. Genco Shipping, 58%. Eagle Bulk Shipping, 56%. We can argue that from a year-to-date perspective, these are buying opportunities and any dips are actually buying points. Gold as well and silver. So we have still um, a view that If you wish to be just a trend follower, dips are actually the best places. Uh, The the buying on the dip space has to be in this sector. But more more importantly, really on the shipping, shipping names, marine shipping. So these drops of um, Nordic American tanker, um, Nutrien, some of the fertilizer group, we think that was actually more of an opportunity to load up. Look at this. Nordic American tanker 220, we think this is on the way up. There is an industry sector play for this marine shipments. Um, we've got the, we mentioned last week, uh, yeah, this week we were buying UUUU. So this was uranium fuel. We were buying here at about five to six dollars. So still it is within that support range, still a strong support. Um, Helmerick Payne talked about uh, these are some of those. Um, oil and drilling, so the shale boom. So these are really just strong uptrends that you can see is just being bought over and over again. And this is, in my view, a strong reversal. If you wanted to make your money just buying and holding, it will be easier to go for where the trend is really strong upon. It's not a short covering. There is, an, there is a set of money that is going into energy and continues to go into energy. Let's take a look at your XLE. A lot of people already know that the market is investing in energy. And we can see week on week, day on day, there has been non-stop buying every single day, even if it is just up 1% a day. Would you rather be up 5% a week consistently or 5% a day up and then down 10% tomorrow? A lot of people would prefer, of course, XLE and mining. XME is starting to rise. Take note that after that drop for the last uh, eight weeks, where mining also fell, which we argue isn't warranted because why did it fall, if you argue? It was because China was closed. Shanghai was closed. But June, Shanghai is open and China opens again. We argue that that also coincided with the strength of Aussie dollar. 
Take note what happened since May 13 until today. Aussie dollar continues to be strong and we are bullish on commodities as well as the commodity currency, Aussie. The dollar has started weakening in favor of Australia and in favor of gold. Gold has been rising from 1800 to 1860. It also is true that when gold is up, silver also goes up and we also saw that in the way. Since May 16, May 13, Silver has rallied from 20.5 to 22.25. And yet, there's a lot of cheap silver miners that you can buy. Let's take a look at silver. Paas is just here at support. FSM, Fortuna Silver Mines, is also just here. near. Well, it's rising, but it's still just there at supports. Um, you've got Hecla Mining, also one of the largest silver entities, also at support. And when we mention energy, we mean all alternative energy. It's not just nuclear. Did you notice how solars went up? Sunrun has been rising since May 12. And if you'll notice, this is a strong outperformance because your index did not make um, a low on May 12. Your index, your NASDAQ, kept on falling down even after May 12, this is May 12, and this is May 13. Okay, so the market has been falling and falling down. Your NASDAQ has had some stocks go new lows. But take note, alternative energy didn't, commodities did not, energy obviously did not. That is, in technical terms, relative strength. When everything else in the world, especially your index, is falling down, but you refuse to fall, that is a sign of strength. And when you are strong, what happens when the markets go up? You go higher. 52-week highs for Diana Shipping, like this, 25% increase in dividends. How about SBLK? Also up, nearing 52-week high. Okay, we're talking about 52-week highs here. And the complete reversal over the last seven years. Because for the first time in about eight, ten years, they get to earn ten times or three times or five times their normal profit cycle. Because in an inflationary world, people are now willing to stock up on inventory for fear that oil can go $200. So they would rather ship all the oil in their countries as much as possible to provide for their own country. We are experiencing shortages in energy and the world's production, like in US, has only gone up from 10 million barrels to 12 million barrels in 50 years. That tells you that we are under um, undersupplied. No matter if we get a recession, we are super undersupplied. And so what will the world have to do? They have to be more adamant in opening all the oil and drill, even to the likes of the oceans. Transocean, which has $7 billion in debt, is suddenly, in my view, going to have a capital restructuring, and it is likely to hit 6 or 5 or 7. Why? Because the world needs oil, even if it has to borrow, and the banks will now let them borrow. So what was once a very difficult ROE is now possible with $100 above oil prices. You've got um, the policy of the government possibly very bullish on nuclear, whether it be US and China. And that tells you why there is support in uranium. And we argue after that two weeks, what, what two months sell off, April till June, you're seeing this rally. In my view, there is a fundamental case for it to rally, whether it be nuclear or solar. Look at all the solar names. On a daily, that is support. On a monthly, your solars are actually at higher lows. We also think this is true for a lot of companies. So that is true for Enphase, for Solar Edge. And we disagree that the market has shunned all the energy nor the agriculture needs. Look at this. Even if CF is dropping, 
in the last few days, that is all at higher lows. Because how else will we get our food without fertilizers? We all know that the Russia-Ukraine is a problem of the world that has trickle effects for the wheat, for the sugar, for the corn. And what has happened? Wheat has just gone up and up and up. If you see this, it tells you that the Nasdaq rally is going to be short-lived, but the commodity super boom is likely to last two to three years or even the next decade, i.e. this food crisis, this energy crisis is a decade that we have to live for unless we can solve the problem immediately. I don't know how long, but it looks like the world has underinvested in energy for a decade, whether it be dirty fossil fuels or especially renewable energy. Now, if you have a choice, you could invest in alternate energy like solar and nuclear, or you could, of course, just simply open all the oil drillers more and more. I think the answer is you just invest in oil because energy needs investment everywhere anyway. So whether you're open the Texas oil, that's fine. That means that you are investing in the likes of Earthstone Energy, which is going higher and higher. You're investing in BOR, B-O-R-R, BOR drilling. And you can see the, str the strongest trends are not your arc names. It's these names. It's oil and energy. And the smaller they are and the more debt they have, the better it is. Because suddenly, they're going to make a lot of money instead of paying all of their debts. And that's what I'm seeing here actually in Nordic American tankers. Small cap, I know. Nobody likes small caps. This is a micro cap, but something to watch out on. But of course, not just small. Go for the big ones. GNK, all-time highs. SBLK, EGLE. We can name a number. That is, in my view, where the money is going. Okay. Now, when I talked about Chinese stocks being at 10-year lows, you might not believe me. It is in a 10-year bear market. Well, this is your 2022, and this is actually 2009. 13 years, 18,000 to 20,000, yes, it bounced. You don't buy just because, oh, there's a technical bounce. For the last few weeks, the market was already buying Chinese names, but they didn't know what the catalyst would be. They were thinking, well, in the, in the aspect of China closing all, just the simple fact that they would reopen by June is enough of a good news. But I think what the market was surprised about was seeing Alibaba, Baidu, and Baozun actually doing well despite the COVID lockdowns. In fact, Alibaba did quite well, not just in e-commerce, but also in their cloud, same as for Baidu. So that is a relief. And that's what you saw. The market didn't expect. That's why it went up 15% up in a single day for Alibaba. So in terms of pessimism, China is in a very pessimistic sentiment. And when you are doing your value analysis, investing style, you can't help but wonder, would I want my money parked in cash? Or if it's really just so low, Alibaba's 81, 82 prior to earnings. But even if you bought after earnings, it's 90. At 90 bucks, is it really, really very expensive relative to the last 12 years? Especially if they want to cooperate. Remember, Chinese authorities today are talking about potential discussions with US over those delisting fears. They want to have the capital markets open, not just in Hong Kong, but also in US. Worst case scenario doesn't also matter because Alibaba is trading both in US and in Hong Kong. You don't need a dual listing. It's already listed, dual. 
This is your S&P 500. The very first gain, as I said, remember, the first gains, the first gains after eight weeks. We've had a tremendous drought in gains. You'll see. Since March 30, every week was just bad. Okay, if we do rally this week, we could also go down. But nowadays, the S&P 500 is trying to catch a bid at the round number 400. Take note that as a technician, a lot of technicians know that 400 and any breakdown of that is called a turtle soup, i.e. it was a fake breakdown. A fake breakdown from 400, people who were more of a um, classic technical analysis knew that if it didn't fall down south too much, you'd know a lot of buyers are actually buying all the stop losses. Here about 390 or 380. Those are the people who know na a lot of newbies would buy at 400 and cut loss at 390. So a lot of the oldies would know that. And that's why there is what you call the turtle soup pattern. Turtle soup was created by old-timer technicians who knew that everyone else was just a breakout player and a breakdown player. They buy breakouts, they sell breakdowns. That is such a traditional um, common technique, which is why Linda Rashke invented the turtle soup. Um, and it is very high probability that a lot of people, once they see a breakdown, Bitcoin drops, 30000 oh, breakdown, $2,000, Ethereum breakdown, oh, let's sell. Because it is such a, a normal practice, a round number breakdown or a round number support. A lot of um, myth, misconceptions and trading ideas have been patterned on simply the round number effect. So if you will ask me, okay, with the round number in your view, if this 400 is a fake breakdown, a turtle soup, how high then could it rally? Okay, the next resistance is this first line, this 415 to 430 which means that you could rally somewhere about 10, uh, from 400 to 420 is 5%. So about extra 4%. 4% in the index could happen in a single day or five days or just six hours. You have to make your view that if the markets rally very quickly in six hours or 10 hours or just one more day, you sell everything because that is your resistance. A quick two-day or two-week rally, get out. You have to understand resistance levels. But if we take this slow, we grind it out, we just flag here, we go down, but we don't fall below the, the recent lows and we just consolidate here, we can then set up for a more convincing strike above. And usually when people like to bargain hunt, the sustainable ones, the ones who want to really accumulate a lot, they would prefer the slow grind for the next few days before resuming up. And in fairness, um, while we don't know the actual setup of the market, what will it do? Will it do a slow grind or will it do a quick pump? A quick pump will render the market to sell off fast. So you just have to realize a quick 3 to 4% gain in the NASDAQ or in the S&P 500, you must automatically sell your shares and short if you wish. That is how I would interpret it. But if you rise 4% after one week again, or two weeks, or three weeks, the longer it takes to rally, the more sustainable it is because you will get a lot of base buyers here. You've got this U.S. index also. You've, uh, you've rallied. Um, there was a 50% Fibonacci retracement. You'll see that from the March 2020 COVID low, 66, we rallied all the way to 16,000. A lot of people are still um, of the view that supports when you use Fibonacci can be just a guide. It is not a full-blown support, but a guide. At the same time, you saw that the support here was 11.4. There were those nice tails, 
those were all your turtle soup players. Yung mga na-stop out dyan. Yung mga nag-cut loss below 11.4, below 11.6, ganyan yan. People who try to buy support and then up, nag-break down, cut sila. You have to understand, um, playing tight is wrong when you are in a wild, wild west. You have to play small and wild. Small and wide versus big and tight. When you play, it has to be small and wide. Why do I mean small and wide? Nobody knows the support. It could have been 11-4. It could have been 10-3. It could have even gone 8-9. We are not past the woods. A lot of people say this could be super depression. I don't know. When Walmart and Target was falling 25%, perhaps the dollar three and dollar general good news could be just this quarter. Who knows? Next quarter could be very bad. Or it could have been really a blip. Costco tonight, earnings, who knows again? I don't think that uh, betting on earnings prior in this type of market is needed because even if earnings were good, sometimes because the market is so scared, you even have the chance to buy it after three weeks. Look at what happened with Facebook. Good earnings. But three weeks after, when the market was falling down, people forgot about it. You could buy the same Facebook at the same price before the earnings at the same price, sometimes even cheaper, $172. How about AMD? You got a retest, even if good earnings. My point is that you already know Alibaba did well. If you can't buy at 90, wait at 80. Or 75. If the market will not go up and make a lot of retests, you'll have your chance to buy. I did that. C Limited had good earnings. It fell $70 this week, 71. Why? Because Snapchat tanked the market. It is only this type of market when Snapchat, which is a very, very small company, can influence a Google and a Facebook and everyone to wrap their minds into selling everything off, which really might make no sense. But that is sometimes what happens when the market is truly bearish. And will we avoid seeing those types of episodes? My answer is we cannot avoid that. When you have a very low liquidity market, a very difficult market where you were selling off eight weeks straight, a lot of people have given up. They have either not looked at the market, no care about earnings, or pretty much they believe earnings is good or bad, I don't care. I'm not touching the market. That type of market tells me sometimes that is capitulation. It may not sound like a super selling climax that everybody and every trader in the world wants. We could just slowly drift by. We could slowly drift by, sleep here, consolidate, go up. If you're going to try to find the resistance, these would be your resistances. The breakdown at 12.5 where people used to buy is becoming your resistance. That means 11.5 to 12.5, 10% index. So here at 11.7, count that to 12.5, another 5 to 8%. So um, weekly, so it depends whether you're looking at the futures or um, so this, uh, sorry, sorry, this is not the futures. This is the daily. This is your futures, 12.3. So at 12.3, if you're looking for where the next resistance lies, it's about 13,000 for the futures. If you're trading the NASDAQ 100, you're seeing another 5% or 6% rally capable either one day, one week, six hours, you know. But I'll tell you what, um, of course, the probability of rising 5% in a day is very little. Um, it's likely to get faded away if that happens. So more, more likely it's going to rally within weeks, not within a day. So if we think that the market's going to rally, what do I believe this SQQQ will become? We argue that SQQQ shot up and made an extension. Used to be that day, 52 was a resistance. But SQQQ managed to go as high as 62. 52 to 62. If it were just a mean reversion, a mean reversion would mean that even at 52, we have leeway to fall 48 or 45. I.e., if you bought anything for the last two weeks, 
you were buying something so oversold. It was so oversold from a, from a historical technical sense that you could rebound within two weeks whether it was good or bad stock. That's the beautiful thing as well. When it's oversold, it could be a meme stock. Nobody cares, but it rallies 30% anyway. Upstart had bad earnings, but it rallies anyway. In a very oversold market, good stocks and bad stocks can go up whether or not they had earnings in the first place. So that means over the last two weeks as well, your TQQQ really went oversold. It went as low as 24.9. Grab it. And now it's 30, 20% up. Just because it's 20% up does not mean that TQQQ cannot rally another 20% higher. It can. Because your SQQQ is still very overbought and your TQQQ is still very oversold. So mean reversion-wise, we now have a recipe to continue rallying. Whether we rally as well in three days, we let the market speak. Let it speak and listen. We watch. So S&P 500 rallies, Macy's, Dollar Tree, even the reopening stocks like Norwegian Cruise Lines, Caesars went up because investors bet on a strong travel demand for the summer months ahead. So here's my view. In the next two weeks, you might get a rally, but pay attention to the companies you want to buy and pay attention to companies that you may want to short eventually. You may not want to short it tonight kasi maaga pa eh. It's too early. But maybe next week, a 5% rally higher, 10% rally higher, post your sales. If you do not believe in this reopening travel demand, in the consumer discretionary being super strong, what should you do? Of course, sell Walmart on rally, sell Target on rally. Sell companies like cruise liners on rallies, sell Airbnbs on rallies, if it rallies. Now, this is the exact move of dollar three. Even if the shorts got super squeezed last night, watch as well how these things play out. We have seen in the past, good earnings will rally and debt get faded away. Is it true? that dollar tree and dollar general could really perform really very good in the next six months. If your view is that we are in a re recession, a really, really deep recession, then maybe a rally on these discount stores is actually your chance to short near the highs. Look at that. The highs are just 170 plus, 180. The higher dollar tree and dollar general goes, we might actually take a contrarian take um, to actually short them when everyone likes them. Gap down, gap up, very noisy. Wait for a resistance and then short. Dollar general, strong rally because of a mistake. People thought that it was bad earnings, but it turned out not to be. It was just back over the last two weeks price. 230 to 180, back to 230. But look, most likely at 240, it's still going to get shorted. How about Macy's? Okay, 23 dropped to 18, not bad earnings, hit 23. Even if Macy's rallies to 26, in my view, I'll take a contrarian take, uh, I'll take a contrarian view here. Consumer discretionary isn't going to go anywhere up. It's just going to go neutral here. So at 26, 28, the higher this goes, the better my shorts will be. It's a good short. Wait for a proper entry point. Nordstrom? Went down, rallied up. Consumer discretionary, they said, is still strong. The middle class are still affluent to spend. If you think it's that's going to happen next six months, rallies at 25 to 28, these are chances for us to sell. I am of the view that it's a sell. I'm bearish on retailers, no matter if they say this month or this quarter or last quarter, that they did well. Now, how about game stock, meme stocks? Mean stocks to me are indicators of risk. But it's very clear where you will short it. It is 80, went 190. 80, went 190. If this rallies near 180, 190, the biggest risk is that it goes 250. But if you think that the market isn't really willing to buy it all the way up, 
I'm not willing to short it. But if the margin rate becomes lower, obviously the market will start reselling again their GameStop. The only difficulty of shorting a GameStop is the margin rate. It was 100% a year. It doesn't make sense to short GameStop if the cost of borrowing the shares is 100% to begin with. When your risk reward isn't skewed to your favor, you don't touch it. With GME, I wouldn't touch it. The borrowing rate is insane. Lululemon, another consumer discretionary retail. Because Macy's went up, Dollar Tree went up, Dollar General, JWN went up. Nowadays, what you're seeing is that the markets are covering. From 400, this dropped to 260. It rallied to 290, but that didn't change the full look of the retail. These are consumer discretionary, athleisure, vanity names. A rally towards 320, in my view, if the market is already topish, if these stocks rallied there at resistance maybe a few months ago at that level, that would be your perfect entries to short. So far, I'm looking at most charts. You'll take about 10% to 20% rally to short. So if you look at the put options, what would be the impact? If you're doing an initiation of puts on Lululemon, say at 320, whatever the prices are today, divide that 50 to 60%. Sorry, um, divide that by half, divide it by, uh, divide it by two or divide by three. So example, if it's trading at $30 divided by 2, that would be 15 until 10. That is where you buy your put option prices. So that is just my tip for you. The markets can rally, put options can deflate. But within the next week or next week and a half, it could be your best time to make a lot of put entries as cheap as you can. Um, so this is just the same as the NASDAQ, just waiting to see how high. So it can go 13,000, right? But uh, you have to break 12.6 first. 12.5, 12.6 has to be broken first before you hit 13. You have to break 4.15 to go to 4.20, 4.30. The nice thing about technicals is all an if-then statement. If you break 4.15, you get a chance to hit 4.30. So if you're long, for instance, you're long today, how high should you hold and trail? As long as above 400 and it's being bought, you just trail. Let's see day by day. Oh, it's going to go up 410, 415. When the index goes up, chances are all the dogs and cats and the trash go up. I wouldn't short when the, when the market is rising, even if I hit a few stocks. Just wait for it to rally and then you will notice anyway, it could not rally anymore. That's when you short. When you wait for that time, when the markets wouldn't go advanced anymore. Okay, so Amazon can rally. That means that here about 2,000 was a support. Where would be the resistance of Amazon? Maybe at 2.4, maybe at 2.5, or maybe 2.3. Here at 2.2, at 2.5, that means another 10%. The higher it goes, the market will indeed go up very quickly for a quick short. So we are not out of the woods, but this is obviously a very great trading opportunity. Apple can rally, 150 watt, you've got a strong resistance there. So that's still going to move your index, your TQQQs will go up, your SQQQs will go down. Alphabet here, but 2160, very oversold because of the Snapchat miss. I think it's going to rally 2223. So even at 2165, yes, it can rally another 2 to 5% further. In fact, we might be surprised it even goes as high as 2.4. Any drops at 2.1 below has been bought this week. And my view is that if the markets try to consolidate, look at patterns to support that 2.1. 2.1 below for Google if you want to enter. Tesla, we've seen the buyers come in. So these were just people who were trying to bottom fish. The buyers at 6.30 and 6.40. Last night, however, the buyers were not bottom fishing. The buyers last night was confident that 620 was the low. So they bought 660, 680, all the way to 700. How high is their target going to be? Initially, peg it at 760 or 770, and then 800, 840. So there's still a lot of re resistances, maybe another 10% for Tesla. How would Tesla go up 10%? Maybe 
five days, maybe 10 days. We don't know what Tesla will do. But usually, if it has to be sustainable, it has to go up just 1% to 2% every day. So 707, 720, 740, 760. The higher it moves, the more susceptible it will break down. So be careful what you wish for. If you want Tesla to go up sustainably, the best that it could do is just go up 1% or 2% at a time. The good news about Tesla is, of course, Shanghai factories are open. Meta platforms, okay, very strong rally last night. It's possible that as it goes higher, a lot of sellers at $200. So ganun lang yon. Be careful what you ask for. The higher it moves, the faster it will fade. It will go down the faster it goes up. So fade the strength if it goes up very, very strong. Looming brands, people are asking me, are we bearish on fast food? My answer is yes. Consumer discretionary, take these rallies as your chance to sell. Blooming Brands is a short in my view. This is the owner of your Outback. Dutch Brothers, which is a coffee place, any rally towards 44 is a good short. It is hard to short at 36 because the market can rally higher. As we said, cats, dogs, meme stocks go up, sometimes all the way up because of short covering. So it's a bad company rallying up it could rally all the way to 44. If you're shorting at 36, just know that at 40 and 44, you still want to short and short and short. It's a matter of small size, wide tranches so that you can short higher and higher. Small and wide is the, is the way to play a volatile market. Not big and tight. Small and wide. SW, not BT. Took a look at some Chinese stocks. How oversold are they? Well, amazing. I saw I, I saw Kings of Cloud, which is uh, I think the number five cloud or number four cloud in China. Um, cloud providers similar to Alibaba, Tencent, Baidu. Um, I think it's number four. Kings of Cloud has dropped from $72 to $3. So when I'm looking at Chinese stocks, if Alibaba can rally 10%, this can rally another 10%. And and it did. So that's why it went up 12%. Some stocks to our some some of these stocks are considered penny stocks nowadays by US investors or US traders um, because of the way they fell. But um, yeah, so I treat them as penny stocks, but I also know that they have a business. A lot of cloud-related games. TikTok, um, Do Yin in China is a Kings of Cloud client, I believe. Okay, so this is the trade. Look at the charts here, three to four. So we're seeing that, as I said, a lot of Chinese stocks have been retesting supports way before the U.S. names went up, way before Hang Seng stocks went up. It was undecided because, of course, that $3 could have fallen down, all-time lows. That was not um, impossibility if Alibaba made a bad earnings. We knew that the market had thin, thin liquidity, thin ice. But since we've got good earnings nowadays, for the next two weeks or three weeks, the market will not forget that. So these supports will be remembered by the market. Um, same for VNet, which is the partner of Microsoft Azure in China. So this was the prior low, 350 to 750, dropped to 450, rallied back to 550. When you see these charts with a capacity to rally 10, 20%, it tells you not to dump your Alibaba yet. It tells you not, not to dump JD. It tells you not to dump Yin. It tells you not to dump Chinese stocks altogether yet. Even if you wanted to short Neo X Beverly, not yet. The answer is not yet. So Alibaba here at 94, don't short it. Not yet. It can go 120 or 110. So just wait for the market to tell you where because it has a chance to rally first. That's your Alibaba. At 94, it can go 100, can go 120, and so on. Where will you stop buying? Or where will you be skeptical? Where will you put your trail? Once it breaks 100, let it go higher. See if it stops at 110 or 120. But it looks like even at 100, some people might sell. So you watch out first. Watch out. So if you want to be profit-taking at 100, not a problem but sell half so that if it goes 110, 120, at least you get a better chance to sell higher. 
So these were the earnings, also the catalyst. Um, yeah, so another fine day for Alibaba. Baidu has a ton of sellers here at 140 to 160. So um, rallied up, but uh, in my view, between Alibaba and Baidu, if I'm going to short, I'm going to short Baidu, but uh, I'll short somewhere here at 140 above. So wait for it, maybe near 10% rally for Baidu, chance to short. Uh, Baidu has done well in terms of their cloud, Baidu cloud, their AI business as well. Baozun, known as the Shopify of China, okay, dropped a lot, rallied last night very strongly, 25% after earnings. These rallies at about 12 to 14, optimal short entries. So you don't need to be very bullish on China. There are companies that you can short if you are a shorter. Um, a firm holdings. So we take a look at even the worst companies in US. Um, a firm is now known as the worst company in the growth stock land after falling 90% in my view. I think it fell 90% from a peak of 160. It fell as low as 14, 13. But take note, these stocks which are considered the worst are also often the highest shorted. You can see that surge in volume at about 13, 14. We started buying here because of that volume grip, super high volume. When you're looking for selling climax, it didn't happen in the index, but we saw a selling climax on Affirm. We saw a selling climax on even Coinbase, actually, at 40 bucks. That's why it rallied. If you want um, a textbook example of, co uh, of companies doing climax, Watch for a very large volume, whether it be a red day or a green day. These days, this $15 area became a super volume day. That's why a lot of people believe that that $15 area for a firm was the bottom. It did go up 15 to 25. It did drop to 20 and then rally to 30. So, of course, at 20, it was in no man's land. 20 could have gone down to 15. Um, there is no psyche to tell you or there's no edge to tell you that if you bought at 20, that it will surely go up 28. Unless you had your crystal ball telling you that um, Alibaba is going to do well, Baidu is going to do well, Dollar Tree is going to do well, Dollar General is going to do well, and so a firm is going to do well. You have to be very great in your earnings prediction to do that analysis. My sense is that the market isn't that bright. They bought it only after. Okay, so that's why the market only bought it here at about 24 or 25. Didn't buy at 20. I don't think so. But if it dips near 20, then that's your higher low support. Um, what is this chart? Ah, square, SQ, block. The market has been very bearish on fintech. A firm, square, upstart, they've been selling it off. PayPal, the, all of the fintech, all of the blockchain. They all got pummeled down, more oversold than any other sector, which is why it's interesting. Because in my view, um, if you check the earnings of Block, aka SQ, the merchants ever since pandemic have grown and grown, and the payments continue to grow even after the pandemic. So this might be more of a high-quality asset that got sold down, something to study, not necessarily the best chart. I do believe that these $100, however, 100 is a round number support. Unfortunately, when you break, remember technical rules. Support and resistance are role reversals. If it used to be a support at 100, it's going to be a strong resistance at 100. And that is like six months worth of resistance. From January, February, all the buyers above 100 are likely to sell at 100. And it coincides, 83 to 100 is 17% rise, 20% rise. So perfect short, you market 20% higher if you are waiting for, you know, optimal shorting ideas. Upstart, so I showed to you a lot of these fintech are just getting killed. So bad company had a breakdown, 80 to $20. Oh my God, that was like 80% down in a day, right? So that was your capitulation on Upstart. Amazing. Upstart and Affirm had massive capitulation. If you wanted to wait for that selling climax, we didn't experience selling climax in the index. I didn't see that. But I saw that in a few names. Upstart had that. 
I didn't look at Snapchat. It could have been a selling climax as well for Snapchat. Um, Upstart did, Affirm did. So actually, just for uh, just for my curiosity, let me look nga at Snapchat. I don't like to buy it, but I want to see if there was a uh, a selling climax on Snapchat. It has to be in super high volume for it to be a selling climax. Yeah, there was a selling climax indeed. So um, from about 25, it tanked 50%, right? To about $12. So there was a huge selling climax. May sumuka, may nagvomit. Somebody sold all their shares. And then that's why at 14, 13, a lot of people are buying it up. It could rally to about 16 to 20 and then they'll sell it off. Pero ano yan? Yan yung tipong selling climax. And then um, this is the dog and cat meme stock na binibili. Tapos si sell din nila. Trading style lang yan. Textbook yung mga ganyan. Selling Climax. If you want to know more about Selling Climax, Capitulation, a good book to read would be Robert Magee, Technical Analysis of Stock Trends. Or just search Selling Climax, Capitulation. Um, it will tell you that um, a Selling Climax is defined by super high volume on that day. Ito yun. So that is a capitulation. The highest, oh, Snapchat, you got it in Snapchat. Did it happen in Roblox? Teka lang ah, curious lang ako. Uh, oo nga. Ayun no, nag-climax. There you go. Nag-Roblox site. Nag-selling climax si Roblox. Did it happen in Unity? Uh-huh. Perfect. See? You've got five selling climaxes. Unity, Roblox, Affirm, Upstart, Snapchat. Selling climaxes. May na-climax. It's like... um. Bad to say this, but um, the climax uh, is the end, no? So, um, matanda naman na kayo eh. So, they say that in, in um, di na nga, wag na nga lang, masyadong bastos. Eh. Basta, chart lang tayo. NVIDIA, okay. NVIDIA, may climax? Wala. Um, ad advanced AMD, okay. Semiconductors, Okay. Walang climax, walang capitulation. Pag walang capitulation, guys, may downside, unfortunately. Next week, next month, bagsak ulit. Target, nagkaroon ba ng climax? Target had a very bad earnings, no? 25% down. Yes, nag-climax. Ayun, no? Super high volume. It could rally, in my view, from about 150, rally to 180, and then down ulit. So I'm waiting for Target to rally here, 180 to 200, for me to initiate my shorts. Perfect short yan kapag textbook mag all the way to 212. So actually, perfect short yung Dutch Brothers pag nag ng 44. So we'll see. Okay? So um, I hope that you learned something and um, at least you saw a lot of climax in the market. Uh, a selling climax is, um, is a good contrarian trade in the very short term. But it is not a good contrarian trade in the long term because... Um, in the long term, kung nag-gap down ng selling climax, all it means is that somebody unloaded every share, parang Bill Ackman selling $400 million of his shares, and then it will never rally back to that level. So Target will have a very difficult time to rally to 212 unless the seller was wrong. E kaso the catalyst here was earnings eh. Kaya hindi, hindi, mag, hindi magbabago. The earnings was bad, so Target is still a short. Okay, so that's it. See you again. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye-bye.